C.L. Bryant, who has done, I'm not going to cover all the amazing things he's done, but he has the big hit film, uh, independent filmmaker of the documentary Runaway Slave. He writes a column for SB Magazine and is the host of America on the Edge with C.L. Bryant, clbryant.net. And we're joined by a gentleman he recommended, uh, uh, Pastor uh, Rodney uh, Brown, uh, born in Port Elizabeth, South Africa, grew up in Eastern Cape. Uh, Rodney and his wife uh, came to America with only $300 and four suitcases with their children in 87. Under the banner of uh, Revival Ministries International, they traveled 46 weeks a year holding weekly meetings in cities across North America and around the world and pastor a church in Tampa, Florida, the, the river at Tampa Bay, founded in 96. And uh, Pastor uh, Brown also travels frequently to D.C. to meet with congressmen and senators on both sides of the aisle to discuss global banking system and uh, other pressing issues. So that's the reason he's on with us, but also to give his perspective from what happened in South Africa, how they take a real wrong, but then use it to bring in basically communism, is my view. You know, you, you, they take one evil and replace it with another. Uh, but we're going to discuss it all in the balance of the hour with both gentlemen, C.L. Bryant, uh, good to have you back with us. Always good to be on with you, Alex. Thank you so much for uh, having us both on again. Thank you. We're going to get to your colleague in a moment to get his take on things. But first off, Ferguson, uh, the whole state of the world, uh, now, you know, the, the tragic death in New York where the cop chokes the man to death. Uh, I mean, seriously, there's some real problems on both sides of the issue here, but what do you think Obama and the Justice Department are really trying to do? What they're trying to do, Alice, is create an underclass here in this country by their actions, and they're using emotionalism of skin color uh, in order to do it. Personal responsibility is something that is totally uh, gone out of the window. In both cases, uh, with both of these gentlemen, who tragically lost their lives, or both of these men who tragically lost their lives, it was not their skin color that got them killed, it was their conduct. And uh, in the case of Michael Brown, obviously his last moments on earth were documented as to what he was participating in, and that was a strong-armed robbery. Why the color of his skin caused him to do that? It was his conduct. And in the case of New York City, where a daughter was choked to death, unfortunately, the policies of Mayor Bloomberg is what got him killed. That's right. The taxation on the cigarette and that type of thing is what got this man killed, not his skin color. Well, that's a point. People don't look at that. I, I tell you, the Democrats seem to be putting everything they can behind racial politics, identity politics right now. Do you think it's working? Oh, and they've been very successful uh, in doing it, especially with a class that is uninformed and broke. Most of those people that are out on the street protesting and so forth, except for the occupiers, the Wall Street occupiers type, who are probably trust fund babies. But uh, most of those people, black people who are out on the street doing the protesting and all of that, I would like to know how many of them are receiving government checks. How much of this are we funding ourselves because we're giving them government checks to be out there tearing up, laying down in the aisles of Macy's? You've been to New York, I'm sure, during Christmas time, and Macy's hires something like 65,000 people. I'm sure a lot of them are minorities during the Christmas holiday. The only people that they're hurting are themselves and people who really want to work. I like what Charles Barkley said about all this. I mean, it, it, it's it, but, but the media plays into it as well. I mean, watching CNN and MSNBC act like Brown was some type of angel, uh, there are a lot of real cases of police misconduct they can focus in on, but they don't do that. They focus in on the ones where the poster child for it is a strong-arm thug. It's tragic to see how they are uh, blasting the police in this situation. Barkley uh, brought up a great point, and I really like uh, him speaking his mind, but the facts are these. Less than, uh, more than 95% uh, of all police contact with civilians end very, very well. The only time usually that you hear a police officer going awry is in a situation like this. Uh, have there been historically in the past, and I'm going back 40, 50 years, where there was need to, in, in the South,
South in particular to be wary of police officers? Of course there was. But in these days and time, we have to consider the alternative, as Bartley pointed out, if the police were to go away. That is what we have to focus on. We're going to go to break here in a moment and come back with both of you. And I want you guys to, to speak about what you want to get into that you think is most important instead of me just asking the questions because you both have such a wealth of, uh, wealth of knowledge. But tell us about your colleague as we go out to break, and then we'll come back and talk to him some. Pastor Rodney Howard Brown is a man of great courage. And what is uh, beautiful about uh, he and I, and we team up on some occasions, the, the visual effect that you see of a South African-born uh, Caucasian and myself being uh, a black American uh, citizen, both of us now citizens of the United States, is very powerful because we both are men of the cloth, men of God, and Alex, we are, in fact, taking on uh, this particular issue in this country. And I believe that we're doing it in a very powerful way, he in his way, I in my way, and of course, he'll uh, to his own horn as to how he's doing it. And uh, I do believe that uh, he has a powerful ministry, and I'm very happy to be friends with him and certainly glad to be on with you and him on this show today. Absolutely. Uh, Revival.com. Uh, uh, Pastor, we're going to break here in about 10 minutes. I'm going to skip this network break because it's so important. I want to get into the banking with you later to understand you know what they're trying to distract us from. Uh, but, Pastor... With your unique perspective from South Africa, looking at what's now happening here in the U.S., uh, what do you think is really going on? First of all, Alex, let me say it's an honor to be on with you. I listen to you all the time, and uh, thank you for your voice on thank you. sanity in a world full of lies and deceit. But um, it's the age-old uh, story of divide and conquer. Like in South Africa, what people don't know, De Beers funded the war in Angola to stop the diamonds from coming out of Angola. So here you've got one million landmines in Angola. They stir it up as a racial thing. And uh, when in reality, South Africa does not own its gold. It does not own its diamonds. De Beers owns the diamonds and Anglo-American owns the gold. And that was all done by a man called Jan Smuts, who was uh, prime minister of South Africa, went to Cambridge, was going to fall out of university. He was conscripted. Uh, by a wealthy man, took him on his wing. He went back to Kimberley, secured the diamond fields for De Beers, went back to the Transvaal, pretended to oppose the British, but actually secured the gold fields for Anglo-American. And uh, he rode down the Pall Mall with the Queen. What is an Afrikaner, a white Afrikaner, riding down the Pall Mall with the Queen of England if he didn't sell out to the system? So basically, high treason was committed in our country by a man who was supposed to be the leader of our nation, who sold out our diamonds and our gold. And of course, if they get white and black to fight each other, then while we're fighting each other and everybody's distracted, they steal everything that we have. I was just in South Africa, and I was on national television across the nation, and I challenged everybody. I challenged my African brothers. I said, you have had your own government for 20 years. Is it any better? Absolutely not. It's more unemployment. There's more trouble there right now because basically they can put the puppets in power, but he who pays the piper calls the tune. And so until we deal with the money system of the globe, the politicians, the next one will be out of office. The next one will be in and he will he will pay to the highest play to the highest bidder. As in America right now, we've got four billion dollars a year coming through the hands of the lobby groups into the hands of the Congress and the Senate. And it is stuff like this that just angers me, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do whatever I can in every way possible to speak out against it and to challenge those in power that they need to repent and get right with God. People, It's almost like people have lost the fear of God, and they don't realize that they're going to stand before God and give an account of what they've done on the earth, and especially with humanity. Well, that's it. We know that civilizations go through cycles. We're going into a very decadent part of the cycle right now. The question is, how bad will it get before people realize that the wages of corruption, the wages of sin are death, and we're talking about political corruption, social corruption. For those that don't know about what happened in Africa, 
uh, from my layman research, there were certainly problems, but it wasn't just black against white. It was, it was uh, ANC against Zulu and Afrikaner against the British, and people don't know about the Boer War. They don't know about Cecil Rhodes. But uh, from what I've researched, it's very s simple. The big British interest, not even the British people, came in over the last 115 years, took over the gold, took over the diamonds, took over all the major resources, and then to defeat the indigenous, not indigenous, but more indigenous than the British, the Dutch who'd been there first, they started playing different tribes off against each other. And That's then right. they just sent Mandela in, the communist, to then pose as this heavenly savior because the te television told us so. And now what the murder rate's about five times what it was. Unemployment's almost double what it was. I've seen the numbers. Uh, I mean, I've even seen uh, polls in South Africa uh, where the majority of blacks in many areas want to go back. Well, I wouldn't go back to apartheid. I would try to go to something better where the people actually get the resources. And that's exactly what's happening here. As well, the, what's as, happening too, mm -hmm. uh, is, uh, some places 65% unemployment. But let me just tell you, Alex, the people are waking up. A former head of the South African Reserve Bank just came up with a book called Inside the South African Reserve Bank, Its Origin and Secret Exposed. And there's a whole group of people that are rising up to sue the South African Reserve Bank for its money creation and what's going on. And I found a group in England. I was just in London last week. I met with a group called Positive Money, and they're doing the same thing. For the first time in 170 years, British Parliament heard about money creation. So I would say that people are, people are getting themselves in the corner and they're coming out. I just don't know what it's going to take the American people to wake up and realize what's going on. It's like I talk to many ministers. They don't want to listen to what I'm saying. But I promise you that what's taking place right now is all it. And what they want to do is create the place to be total lawlessness and to have a situation where we can't trust the police. Then they're going to bring in the NATO troops and we are going to martial law. I mean, that's the next step on the agenda. Apart from going house to house and gun confiscation, all driven by United Nations Agenda 21. And so... I find myself, you know, obviously we go around, we preach the gospel. We, we went into Washington, D.C. back in July. C. O'Brien came and joined me. Fifteen nights, I preached the gospel 400 yards from the White House. I exposed the whole system, the Federal Reserve, the IRS, and all the wickedness that's going on. And then during the day, we went into the Congress and the Senate. And I met with many people, both sides of the aisle. One Democratic senator looked at me, and he said to me, Sir, when you come to Washington... You have to decide, are you going to sell your soul? Then he looked at me and said, I have not sold my soul. But he said, sir, we are an industrial military complex and we are run by offshore banks. And then another congressman looked at me when I told him what's going on with the global uh, money system. He said, how do you know all this? He said, you and probably 10 congressmen in America know what's happening in the money system. And here's what he said to me. He said, when it all collapses, he said there will be no food in the stores, and he said within 12 hours there would be riots, and he said we will go to martial law. So there are people on the inside of the system that are trying to do their best. They just don't know what to do because obviously the whole system is controlled by our wonderful Federal Reserve. Let me just inject here and, and then get C.L. Bryant's take on this. The big picture of why they're playing us off against each other they have engineered a collapse so that they can break us fully and basically force us all onto welfare. That is Agenda 21. That is Cloward and Piven. That's the model they've used in the black community. It's what the social engineers, Margaret Sanger, Planned Parenthood want. They are diabolical demons. And, and the minute people realize that is the minute we start changing this. And the same British model that took over South Africa is now taking over America. It's multinational. And as you said, when I talk to congressmen and senators privately, a lot of them that you don't hear on the show, folks, I'll just leave it at that, and generals, they go, no, you're absolutely right. What you say is what's going on. And they said, if the American people only knew, it's the ignorance that allows it. That's why we're here. Pastor Bryant, your take on what Mr. Brown was just speaking about and uh, your overall take on any hope for this country. This is why I wanted you to, uh, I wanted to introduce you to uh, Rodney Howard Brown. It's because his view, your view, my view, 
These are the views that, in fact, can in, enlighten and save our nation, our republic. Black people don't realize that they have been a test 